Welcome to module number 4, Roots of Equations. Now we're going to discuss the second method we call the method of bisection. What is the what is the bisection method? If it is possible to bracket f of x or the function f at point x is equal to 0 in an interval x1 and x2, the bisection method iteratively having the interval until it becomes sufficiently small. Okay. So for example, we have here in the graph, okay, so x1 to x2, and then, okay, so the middle point is x3. Now we determine uh, the new interval, whether x1 to x3 or x3 to x2, depending on the uh, where the root is. Okay, so we get the function at x3 and determine whether it is, there's a change of sign, the same as the incremental method, okay, and if f of x2 has a positive and then x3 is negative, x1 is negative, therefore the root must be in the interval x2 and x3. So we will define that one later. Okay. This, is, this process is also known as interval halving method. It may not be the fastest method available for computing roots, but it is the most reliable one once a root has been bracketed. If a root is to be found in an interval x1 to x2, then fx1 and fx2 have opposite signs. This same principle in the incremental search applies to bisection method. Okay, So here we have the function f at about point x3, where x3 is the midpoint between x1 and x2. Okay, so as I said, er as I said earlier, if... If our interval, um, sorry, if our function f of x2 here is positive, okay, and then here the function of f of x3 is negative, then therefore, sorry, this should be positive, okay, negative, so therefore the root is in between x2 and x3. Uh, and most likely, if this is the case, so our x1 is negative, okay? And uh, so there's no root in between, okay? So now uh, the case is we have um, what we call the... Uh, so what if the root is in between x1 and x3? So the sign of the function f of x3 and f of x1 should be opposite. Okay, so, and then, therefore, there should be a root. Now, what if f of x1 ha has a positive, uh, pos positive, uh, sorry, positive uh, function, okay, but which is opposite to f of x3, meaning there's also a root here, okay? So, maybe the same as the example below, okay, in the previous incremental method. So, between x1, x2, x3, so there are two roots, okay? So, but here, um, if f of x, uh, the function f is negative at x3 and then positive at x2, meaning, therefore, there should be a root in between, okay? So, so then what we're going to do is to half again, okay? And then let's say this is x4 and evaluate. With f of x4, okay, we know that f of x3 is negative, assuming it is negative, and then f of x2 is positive, and then the let's say f of x4 is is uh, positive. Okay, so if it is positive, and then f of x3 is negative, so they are opposite. Therefore, the root must be in between the interval x3 and x4, and not. And there's no root between x4 and x2. Okay? And then we do the halving. Halving again. So we can make x5 here. Okay? Until such time that you will reach the root. Okay? So that's the idea there. So we, I, uh, by doing iteration, okay? So we, were, we can get into uh, closer to the root. Okay? If, if not... Uh, if not the exact value, but it's very close to the the root, okay? 
So then we repeat the process, okay? We're changing the intervals, no? For the first x1 to x2, then it becomes x3 to x2, then it becomes x3 to x4, so on and so forth. So um, the two interval, uh, the points, two interval points, if you get the absolute value difference, and then if this is le less than the predefined threshold value, then we will stop the process, okay? And it may not be, it might be zero, but most of the time, very small value, okay? So we have here the function by section, given the function f, we will define function f, and then two intervals, x1 and x2. And then we have uh, some, some of the tolerance. So tolerance is the user-defined threshold uh, value. And then we have this switch zero. So this module finds a root of f of x is equal to zero by, by section. The root must be bracketed in x1 and x2. When switch is equal to one, so it can be zero or one, uh, it returns root is equal to none if f of x increases upon by section. So uh, you can actually remove this one, okay? So it would not be a problem. So this is the um, code no, in Python. So we have Okay, so we have defined here f of x1, and uh, okay, so um, the same illustration as what we have discussed, no? So x1 and x2, and then uh, get the x3, so we have here um, the happening, okay, and uh, here we have here, okay, so the halving, so we evaluate the function at x3, point x3, and then we uh, we look for the condition, okay, that whether it is greater than um, x1, and then greater than x2, then return none, and then uh, return x3, then so on and so forth. So, um, basically, this defines our goal, no? So, to, to half again, to half, so on and so forth, until the interval is very close to the root, and then the, the 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 final value will be the the midpoint of the two final interval points and that will be the root of this function okay so okay it's very good if we can illustrate an example so use by section to find the root of the same quadratic uh, sorry it's a fourth degree polynomial equation the previous example in uh, the first method that lies in the interval 0 to 1 with a four digit accuracy. Okay, so we will first define f of x and uh, sim similarly to the previous method. And then we can get directly x, no? So you have the function f we have defined here. So if you have ad other sets or other set of uh, functions, so you can change here. And then you have the interval. And then actually, you can remove the switch, okay? So we don't care about the switch for now, okay? So that's for the advanced uh, idea, uh, ideas of this, no? So then, um, so it will return to you the midpoint of the last interval. So meaning, if the last interval is x3 and x4, then um, the, the midpoint of those interval here will be considered as the root, okay? Given that you have reached the tolerance, which is 0 0.0001. 0 000 okay, so it's very small. So the difference between um, the two interval points, okay? So you have 0 0.8166. That's it, which is similar to the previous result of the incremental search method in section 4.1. That's it. That's the end of our method of bisection.